Welcome back. This is day nine of our solving quadratic unit. Today we'll be learning our final method for solving quadratic equations. I will need you to follow the link below that derives the quadratic formula and has a catchy tune. I think this is a great video and is also a fun way to memorize the quadratic formula. Just a reminder, a copy of the handout is provided in the description so you can follow along. Enjoy. Oh yeah, it's that time again. We have some math problems here and we need you to do them now. Pause the video, complete the problems, and return to the video when you're done. Alright, uh, let's go over this do now. Solve each by factoring and completing the squares. So you're going to solve this problem by just factoring. We've done that millions of times before. Um, so let's factor this. Uh, x squared plus 6x plus 8 equals 0. So factoring... All right, we should be naturals at this by now. Um, that's going to be x times x to give me the x squared term. To get the 8, we got 4 and 2, and we have 8 and 1, but we need to make 6. So I know that's going to be a 4 and a 2, and I know this will have to be a positive and a positive. All right, use the zero product property like we've been saying. So x plus 4 equals 0. The other one is x plus 2 equals 0. And we're going to solve this, and we'll get negative 4. Or my other answer is going to be x subtract 2 equals 0, which is x equals 2. All right, beautiful. So we've solved this problem by factoring. We're going to solve the next one by completing the square. So again, I like that method. x squared plus 6x. Leave space. Move the 8 over, so I'll get negative 8. Perfect. Now what will that term be? Remember, we take b, we divide it by 2, so we'll take b divided by 2, and we're going to square that. So that'll be 6 divided by 2 squared, which is 3, which is 9. So I'm going to add a 9 to both sides of my equation. So I'll add a 9 there. And then we will get an x plus 3 squared equals 1. And then we'll solve this guy, and it won't be too bad. So plus and minus x, ooh. Ooh. x plus 3 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 1, and we'll get x is equal to negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 1. But remember, what's the square root of 1? Well, that's just 1, so we know this is x is equal to negative 3 plus or minus 1. So, my two answers for this problem are going to be x is equal to negative 3 plus 1. The other answer is x is equal to negative 3 subtract 1. And my two answers for this problem are x equals negative 2, x equals negative 4. Same answers that we have over here on the left. And I just saw something that this should have been a positive sign. This should be a negative right there. So we should get the same answer. We're solving the same problem. All right, so um, what I want to show you is this is our first method. We learned that a while ago, how to solve quadratics by factoring. This was the second way to solve quadratics. We learned how to complete the square. And today we're going to go over into a third method. We're going to have another method that we're going to use. All right, all right, let's go. Hopefully you had a chance to uh, watch this video. It's a great little video. Um, I always watch it in class. Um, if you haven't watched the video, then pause this video, go down to the link below, and click on this video. Um, I have a link to there to the quadratic formula song. Um, also, I like how he um, drives the formula also for us. So again, it's a real little cool little video. Um, and now let's see if you've already watched it, then let's actually use it. So um, in this problem right here, Here's what we're saying. Let's summarize what we learned so far. So in this, we have a quadratic. So if if this happens, if you have some quadratic that is in a standard form, then we can use the quadratic formula to solve it. So this little messy formula right here will be used to help us solve for whatever x is um, when we want to. Now remember, the way was we've been solving, um, the first way we learned how to solve was we learned how to factor. Okay, so we've already practiced factoring. The second thing that we did just recently was uh, completing the square. All 
Okay, and so now there's this third way. The third way um, is the quadratic formula. Now, again, hopefully, hopefully you see that uh, each method will have its benefits. So for instance, factoring is usually the fastest way of solving quadratics. If we can factor, then it's really nice. If you're good at factoring, it's really nice to do that. Um, completing the square, that works also to when, our, when usually when our B term is positive, or I'm sorry, is even, then that's a nice way to use that one. And if the numbers are getting bigger, then factoring is not working too well, then completing the square would be another way to do it. Um, but then this third way, the quadratic formula, this one is used more in more in like real life applications. If you know we have decimals, fractions, really large numbers, we're going to want to use um, the quadratic formula when we're solving problems. Um, and what you'll notice here, I've also helped you out. I gave you this little template, this little frame here to help you out with um, how to solve these. I will do this on the homework also. I'll give you a few examples where you can use this template, but eventually, um, once you kind of start getting uh, a little bit neater and getting your format down, then you, it should be easy to use this. All right, you should be able to do it on your own. So let's try a problem. Um, next problem. Okay, so let's try this problem. Um, it says x squared plus 6x plus 8 equals 0. Um, let's see if we can use the quadratic formula. Now remember, let me just write this down real quick. Remember that it has to be in standard form when you're using this formula, so it has to be in this form. All right. And what we notice is that this one is in that form. If we found out a will be this value here, and that's going to be a 1 since it's not written, b will be this value, and that's a positive 6 and c will be this value. So let me just write those down. So again, I usually always write down what a, b, and c are. So a is one, b is positive six, and c is eight. All right, so now, another good habit that I usually tell my students is to write down the quadratic formula every time you're gonna use it. Just, it helps you memorize, it helps you put it in your brain, and that way you'll remember what's going on here. So negative b, so the opposite of b, well, that means this is gonna be a six, plus or minus the square root of b squared. Well, b is 6 again, so I'll plug in a 6. Subtract 4 times a. Well, a is 1 in this problem. And then times c, and c is 8 in this problem. And all of this is divided by 2 times a. Well, a is 1. So that's not too bad. First step, all we did was find out what a, b, and c are. Second step, write down your quadratic formula. Third step, we're just plugging in some values. And now we just do a little bit of math. And usually I just tell my students do a little bit each time and this will get easier and easier this problem. So we have negative six plus or minus six squared. What is six squared? Well, that's 36. And then subtract four times one times eight. If you need a calculator to help you out with that one, go ahead, but that's 32. And then this divided by two times one, which is two. So look. Not too bad, just a couple of steps and we're able to work this out. And let's continue simplifying. So I'm gonna simplify underneath my radical right there. So I'm gonna get negative six plus or minus, what is 36 subtract 32? Well, that's just four. And then this is all divided by two. All right, now perfect. Now from there, sometimes I'll leave it right now. Sometimes I'll leave it like that, or I'll have to use a calculator to kind of give me an answer. But I'm going to keep working this problem out because guess what? You should know what the square root of 4 is. And since we do know that value, let's find out what our answers are. So I'm going to write this down. I have x is equal to negative 6 plus or minus, I'm oh, sorry, plus the square root of 4 divided by 2. And then my other answer is x is equal to negative 6 subtract the square root of 4 over 2. All right, so let's work this problem out. We know this. What's the square root of 4? That's just 2. So this answer is really x is equal to negative 6 plus 2 over 2. The other answer is x is equal to negative 6 subtract 2 over 2. So finally, we have x is equal to negative 4 over 2 which x is equal to negative 2. So there's one of my answers to this problem. 
All right, and this one is x is equal to negative 8 over 2, so x is equal to negative 4. So we just use the quadratic formula to find my two answers. Okay, again, you'll notice it seems like a lot of work, but it's not, it's not that bad. It's not too bad of a problem.